Hello everybody. This video series provides a comprehensive and very simple to understand presentation on panel data regression. And I'm going to begin with a quick description of the major types of data that we typically encounter in empirical studies. The first here, cross-sectional, is a data set in which observations of the subjects are obtained at the same point in time. In this example, the year 2020. Subjects here could mean firms, individuals, states, regions, or provinces of a country. Time series right here is the case where observations are generated over time. And as you probably already know, time series regressions can be problematic because of the issue of non-stationarity. Panel data, this is the guy right here, also called longitudinal data, is a combination of time series and cross-section observations. And this is what we're going to talk about in this series. It's important, though, to be mindful of the correct panel data structure as we examine the different types of panel data. Now, notice that um, each firm's chronological data are completely listed before moving on to the next. So as you can see here, firm one's data are listed chronologically from 2018 to 2020, and we do exactly the same for firm two and also for firm three. And this is exactly the way the data structure must be represented on your estimation platform. The first example here is that of a balanced panel, which is the case where the subjects have the same number of observations. In this case, we have three firms, one, two, and three, and three years of data apiece. Now, a short panel right over here is a balanced panel in which the number of firms is more than the number of time periods. So as you can see right here, we have three firms and two time periods, two years of data each. While a long panel down here is the case where the number of periods exceeds the number of firms. So as you can see, we have three years of data for each of these two firms right here. Now then, a dynamic panel includes lagged values of the dependent variable y, as I represent right here, and um, an unbalanced panel is where the number of observations is not the same for all the subjects, for all the firms in this case. In this example, yes, you can see firm one has two observations in yellow, firm two, three observations in pink, and firm three has only one observation. You gotta be careful when utilizing unbalanced panel because you might encounter uh, problems um, of inconsistent and unbiased um, parameter estimates if the right set of assumptions are not made. So now, how do we estimate panel data? Now here are some initial ideas, time series regression perhaps, you might, you might think, you know, where um, you estimate a time series model for each of the firms in your samples in this case. But this is tricky because as you can see, you're gonna have disparate pieces of information, meaning different regression models for each of the three firms which would not enable, as I note here, a comprehensive assessment of how the independent variables jointly affect Y within the same business environment. So this is definitely not a good approach, and that's why we're giving it two thumbs down. And you might also say to yourself, how about a cross-section regression? So that for each year, uh, you're gonna estimate a cross-section regression for all the firms. So right here, for the year 2020, for example, you're gonna pull data for firm one, firm two, and firm three, and then regress it and do the same for each of the years. But again, this approach will severely limit the degrees of freedom required to perform a meaningful and comprehensive analysis. So not a good approach. And again, two thumbs down. You might also say, how about a between group cross-section regression where, um, yeah, all firms are going to be included. You're going to be taking the average of each firm's values over the entire period. So you can see here that for firm one in yellow, you take the average of all these variables right here, and that's it right there. Do the same for the firm in pink, firm two that is, and that's it right here, and then firm three, and that's it right here. But you can see quite so clearly that in addition to removing any time dependent information that might be useful in your estimation, you also are limiting your sample size from nine to only three. Not a good approach, at least not very comprehensive enough. And for that, two thumbs down. And then we get here 
to the big guy called panel data regression represented here so that for each firm I and for a given time period T you're gonna list all the observations for all the variables Y X1 and X2 so this is definitely the best approach because it additionally it accounts for the impact of firm specific attributes what are these firm specific attributes well those attributes that delineates or differentiate firms in that environment which would include their geographic location their management philosophy customer orientation corporate culture and stuff like that definitely the, definitely the best approach and for that a smiley two thumbs up now then so how do how does panel regression work now suppose we wish to examine the uh, effects of capital structure capex on firm value right here right three unobserved error terms in this specification are the time dependent error term mu sub t the uh, firm specific error term here omega and the idiosyncratic error term right there so the focus in this analysis is going to be how to account for the firm dependent error term omega right there so we could use dummy variables to capture the effect of time by the way by adding a dummy variable for time period one and a dummy variable for time period two if we have three time periods you do you don't want to add a third dummy variable because then you're gonna fall into the dummy variable trap because d1 will take on the value of one for time period one zero otherwise d2 will take on the value of one for time period two zero otherwise and so the case where d1 and d2 are zeros would be where we identify the third time period now though in the same way you could consider using dummy variables to represent the different firms in the sample as a way to capture their individual characteristics however such a model I point out here would uh, easily become pretty tedious and unwieldy and definitely impractical especially if the number of firms in is very large and so the final model might look something like this all right where VT is uh, uh, consists of the firm dependent error term and the idiosyncratic term. So the question then becomes how should we estimate this final model? To answer this question we're going to consider pooled OLS, fixed effects model, and random effects model. At the minimum these are the econometric models that must be considered in any panel data regression and these are explained in turns over the course of this uh, video series. The multi, uh, the, uh, this multivariate example that you see right here is designed to examine the combined effects of capital expenditure and book value of equity on the firm's market capitalization. And we're going to demo this using a balanced panel of 10 firms, each with 20 years of annual data yielding a total of 200 observations. And so this is what we're going to utilize to uh, explain how to perform each of the different types of panel data regressions, pooled, fixed effects, and random effects. Stay tuned.